Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Esther Williams was the million dollar mermaid of classic Hollywood. It was the first film to cost over one million dollars. Movie fans got all wet over Esther. When Esther Williams worked at MGM in the 40s and 50s in a series of swimming musicals, movie stars didn't reveal the truth about themselves or their co-stars. Secrets were guarded, bodies stayed buried, and studios paid off police when actors got out of line. How Esther Williams cured her depression with experimental methods. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you're new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. During Hollywood's heyday, big studios battled over the next box office attraction. While Gene Kelly danced and Judy Garland sang, Esther Williams swam into the heart of America with her dazzling smile, stunning acrobatics and wholesome appeal. She is best known for her starring roles in MGM's aquatic musical films of the 1940s and 50s, films which are often credited with introducing synchronised swimming to the world, but she was a pioneer in many other ways as well. Williams was one of the best competitive female swimmers of her day, and after becoming a movie star she became the first celebrity to have a product endorsement. She was also a pioneer in the design of women's swimsuits creating designs which allowed women freedom of movement in the water. Million Dollar Mermaid was the 1952 blockbuster that cemented swimmer and aqua musical star Esther Williams as a Hollywood luminary. In a particularly captivating scene, one of the most mesmerising of her career, the brunette beauty slides into a turquoise pool amid billowing plumes of yellow and red smoke before being hoisted above a kaleidoscopic formation of synchronised swimmers. Her movies, with their forgettable titles and meaningless plots, were ultimately memorable for the lavish scenes that saw Williams performing otherworldly tricks in the water, accompanied by spurting fountains and innumerable synchronised swimmers. Williams starred in the film as Annette Kellerman, the real-life Australian swimmer who overcame a childhood bout of polio to achieve fame as a champion swimmer, Hollywood film sensation and pioneer of the modern one-piece swimsuit in the early 1900s. Williams was recognised throughout her career for her beauty and athleticism, so she appeared in numerous pin-up posters and advertisements, as well as magazine and newspaper articles. Esther Williams had one contribution to make to movies, her magnificent athletic body, and for over ten years MGM made the most of it, keeping her in clinging, wet bathing suits and hoping the audience would shiver. She matched her swimming ability with her ability to have a strong presence on the screen. She was a movie star. She was vibrant on screen. Handpicked for stardom by movie mogul Louis B. Mayer, Esther shed her wide-eyed innocence at what she affectionately calls University MGM, a unique educational institution where sex appeal and glamour were taught, a school where idols were born. Once a national swimming champion and struggling sales girl, overnight she became one of the most bankable stars in Hollywood. Her career in films that might have been forgotten were it not for her water ballets, was a microcosm of the sorts the power the Hollywood studio system wielded. It turned an untested Olympic caliber swimmer into a movie star with a $250,000 pool. The pool was nicknamed Pneumonia Alley by swimmers. And though fame came quickly, Esther's personal life was often less than joyous. Through troubled marriages, cross-dressing lovers, financial bankruptcy, Williams was born in a tiny house in southwestern Los Angeles, California, on August 8, 1922. She was the youngest of Louis Stanton Williams and Beulah Myrtle Gilpin Williams's five children, and the only one of the bunch to have been born in California. The family had moved there after their oldest child, Stanton, became an actor at the age of six. The boy used to sneak into the theatre in Salt Lake City, where the family lived to watch rehearsals and on one day Broadway actress Marjorie Rambeau spotted him and recruited him. When Stanton died suddenly at the age of 16, the family was devastated, especially the eight-year-old Williams, who had been particularly close to him. 
She had to take Stanton's place as the family's hopes for being successful in those difficult depression years. She grew up outside of Los Angeles, where she competed for a city swim team and won numerous titles, and set national records as a teenager, including a 100-meter freestyle victory at the Women's Outdoor National Championship in 1939. The next year she was selected for the Olympic team, but the Games were cancelled when World War II broke out. Williams left competition in 1940 to make a living selling clothes in a department store for a few months until she was invited by showman Billy Rose to work a bathing beauty job in his Aquacade show at the World's Fair. While performing she was spotted by MGM Scouts and given a contract with the film studio in 1941. Frankly, I didn't get it, she recalled. If they had asked me to do some swimming scenes for a star, that would have made sense to me, but to ask me to act was sheer insanity. She finally agreed to visit MGM boss Louis B. Mayer and recalled that she took the job after her mother told her, no one can avoid a challenge in life without breeding regret, and regret is the arsenic of life. She was offered a screen test paired with none other than Clark Gable. Gable liked her, the studio liked her, and she was signed to a contract. Williams was known for her frankness and self-deprecating humour. She became a film sensation over the next decade by starring in the studio's hugely popular aqua musicals, including Bathing Beauty, Neptune's Daughter and Million Dollar Mermaid. She swam more than 1,250 miles in 25 aqua musicals throughout her film career. But which Esther Williams do you want to hear about? Do you want to hear the story of a sweet child who grew up during the Great Depression and was determined to please her parents? She worked hard as a teenager, swam her way through hundreds of miles to be a champion. The world remembers Esther Williams as a movie star, but she was so much more than that. She was a kind of post-World War II version of Martha Stewart, the mermaid tycoon. She was a perfect housekeeper and a Hollywood symbol in a bathing suit at the same time. Nobody talks about that most of her time she was working 12 hours a day in that luxurious pool at MGM, but she also had to stand up in her personal life that seemed to be repeatedly dysfunctional. Esther Williams may have been known as a swimmer first and a movie star second, but if there were an Oscar for Hollywood gossip, that would be her real achievement. Her 1999 memoir, The Million Dollar Mermaid, dishes the dirt as few others have. Williams could be shameless and shamelessly funny. She offers revelations about Marlena Dietrich, Lana Turner and a merry-go-round of glamorous lovers. And a family friend who abused her when she was 13 and 14, her 1959 doctor supervised LSD trip, second husband Ben Cage, an alcoholic albatross, who blew ten million dollars of her money, third husband Fernando Lamas, a vain egotist who made her drop her career, a brief affair with Victor Mature, her scrapes with death while making her series of swimming musicals during her fifteen years at MGM. At the end Esther Williams became an exercise in insecurity. On the surface everything looked perfect. The gossip columnists couldn't stop with the stories about her love life and her secret relationship with Jeff Chandler, whom she met during the shooting of Raw Wind in Eden in Italy. Her whole image was all a Hollywood PR fantasy. Behind that public facade was a woman in deep emotional pain. She was in her late thirties and had just been through a wrenching divorce only to discover that her now ex-husband had spent all her earnings and left her with a huge debt to the IRS. At that point I really didn't know who I was. Was I that glamorous femme fatale? Was I just another broken down divorcee whose husband left her with all the bills and three kids? She lost her MGM contract in the 1960s and had to pay millions to the studio in damages. On her way down she slapped her name on swimming pools and exercise videos, stumbled through four unhappy marriages and started to experiment with taking LSD for her depression. She did LSD as an attempt to get her mental state more balanced. Cary Grant talked her into it and it supposedly really helped. After everything disappears, her marriage, her job, her youth, her money, she finds herself on the edge. 
I was single again and at a crossroads in my life. I was deeply in debt with a career on the ropes and I had three small children I was going to have to nurture and support. It was at this time that I read about Cary Grant's use of LSD under a doctor's supervision and how it had given a new direction to his life. In those days LSD was still an experimental drug and was often used by doctors to help bring people out of terminal depression. A clinic in Hollywood administered the drug to her in a controlled setting and shortly afterwards looking in the mirror this is what she saw. I was startled by a split image. One half of my face, the right half was me, the other half was the face of a 16 year old boy. The left side of my upper body was flat and muscular like the chest of a boy. I don't know how long I stood there touching and exploring but I was not afraid. She wrote, LSD seemed like an instant psychoanalysis. With my eyes closed I felt my tension and resistance ease away as the hallucinogen swept through me. Then without warning I went right to the place where the pain lay in my psyche. Now here was Cary Grant saying, I know that all my life I've been going around in a fog. You're just a bunch of molecules until you know who you are. In a fog. That was exactly how Esther was feeling and she was desperate to break through it. Cary warned her it takes a lot of courage to take this drug because it's a tremendous jolt to your mind, to your ego. After Williams assured him she had to find some answers fast, Grant agreed to introduce her to Dr. Hartman. Esther, who has lived for years in Beverly Hills with her longtime husband Ed Bell, still has a swimming pool and still remembers her experience with LSD vividly. She eagerly took her little blue pills and was thrilled to discover that she returned to the day when she was eight years old and her beloved 16-year-old brother Stanton died. The family had moved from Kansas to Los Angeles convinced Stanton was designed for stardom and his death devastated each family member in different ways. Under LSD Esther saw my father's face as a ceramic plate. Almost instantly it splintered into a million tiny pieces like a windshield when a rock goes through it. Then she saw her mother's face on that terrible day and all the emotion had drained out of her and her soft kindly features had hardened. During the session Esther realised, observing it from a distance as if I were acting in or watching a movie, that ever since the day her brother had died her life had been consumed by the necessity to replace him in every sense of the word and suddenly this little girl was in a race against time to be an adult. Exhausted but calm Esther left the doctor's office and returned to her Mandeville Canyon home where her parents, still emotionally broken by Stanton's death, were waiting to have dinner with her. She understood them that night in a profound way and while I sympathised I was also sickened by their weakness and their resignation. I saw that they both simply had given up which, no matter what life had in store for me, was something I could never and would never do. For Esther Williams, Cary Grant, Betsy Drake and many others the experience of taking LSD had a profound effect on them. Over and over in interviews former patients recounted how it changed their perception of the universe and of their place in it. Most agreed with Sidney Lumet who says LSD provided remarkable revelations. He continues to consider very useful to this day. Yet in many cases their experiences were not all positive, sometimes because of unexpected reactions to the drug, sometimes because of odd even irresponsible actions by the therapists who were in uncharted waters, way beyond normal medical protocols. Finding it harder to get work once the economy of the mid-fifties ushered out the era of expensive movie musicals, Williams retired in 1962 to be a full-time wife to one-time co-star Fernando Lamas. There are few stars like Esther Williams, her films are a perfect expression of Hollywood's expressive style, opulent, extravagant, lavish and magnificent. She was groomed to be a star in the Dream Factory and thrived in cinematic spectaculars. I've been a lucky lady, she said in a 1984 interview. I've had three exciting careers. Before films I had the experience of competitive swimming with the incredible fun of winning. I had a movie career with all the glamour that goes with it. That was ego fulfilling, but it was like the meringue on the pie. My marriage with Fernando, 
That was the filling. That was the apple in the pie. After Lammas' death in 1982, Williams regained the spotlight. Williams considered herself a swimmer rather than an actress, and her few attempts at straight dramatic roles were unremarkable. She retired from movies in the 1960s, but continued to lend her name to a variety of swim-related products, including a line of swimming pools, and was an ardent supporter of the sport of synchronised swimming, which her films had helped popularise. Esther Williams died at age 91 in her sleep on June 6, 2013, in her home in Los Angeles, California. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Esther Williams? Williams will be remembered not only for putting swimming on the map in film, but also for the genuine star power she brought to the screen as a singer and actress.